In the last two years, I have been personally involved hands-on in more than 100 AI projects across the globe. One thing I can tell you with all fairness is that 80% of all those projects were done on closed API-based models from either Anthropic, OpenAI or Google. Yes, we all talk about all these open weights, open source models, either from China or models like Llama from the West. But the truth of the matter is still these companies, OpenAI, Anthropic, and now Google, they lead the pack with their closed and API based models. That is why just to be in the real world in this video, I am going to explain in very simple words what exactly is meant by using these models in production, especially from the cost perspective, because no matter what the hype is, no matter where the industry is going at the end of the day, if we are implementing this AI for the sake of business, we need the business value. One of the cornerstone of getting this business value out is to make sure that we are aware of cost. If you have been following my channel, you will know that the competition between OpenAI, Anthropic and Google isn't just about performance. It's mainly about price these days. And in 2025, especially as we stand at the end of August, API pricing has become one of the biggest factors deciding which models developers actually use. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Please like the video and subscribe as that helps a lot. Today we are going to compare the pricing of the most powerful closed API models, which includes OpenAI's GPT-5 family, the O3 reasoning models, which, which are very much in use, and then comes Anthropic's Cloud Cloud 4, both Opus and Sonnet, and Google's Gemini 2.5 Pro, which is a really good model. But we won't stop at cost. I'm also going to show you how these models rank in benchmarks a bit, and then we will know which one gives you the most capability for your dollar. Let's look at this table. TLDR, you can just look at this table and that is what the cost looks like and maybe a bit of a use case as which model is suitable for what. So the table shows input and output pricing per million tokens along with some quick notes on what each model is best at. I will be <clears throat> now explaining this table in very simple words. Also be aware that these prices may change very very quickly because it's a bleeding edge field at the moment. And then there is a lot of pressure from uh, Chinese AI labs, uh, which are offering these similar sort of models in Apache 2 license, open with open source, which you can install easily offline. Now, looking at the open AI model first, GPT-5 is a flagship at 1.25 US dollar per million input tokens and $10 per million output tokens. It's positioned aggressively against Anthropic's Cloud Sonnet, but with far stronger coding performance. GPT-5 Mini is a very attractive middle option, just 25 cents input and $2 output. And all the prices, as I said, they are in US dollars, making it the sweet spot for real production application. And GPT-5 Nano is the cheapest serious model in this entire list, only 5 cents for input and 40 cents for output, which makes it quite perfect for high scale or latency sensitive applications. Then we have the O3 family. The standard O3 is optimized for reasoning, priced higher at $2 input and $8 output. But the O3 mini, especially when you see caching, brings the cost down to about 50 cents input, which is extremely competitive for a reasoning focused model. Anthropic's Claude 4 family is much, much more expensive. Claude Sonnet comes in at $3 input and $15 output, already several times higher than GPT-5. And Claude Opus 4.1 is the most expensive model here, at $15 input and $75 output per million tokens. These are strong models but priced for enterprise with very deep pockets. And that is why if you are trying to build a business on top of it, I don't know how you are going to survive, what would be the margin if you are using Anthropics models. <clears throat> but they are good too, no, no doubt there. Finally, Google's Gemini 2.5 lineup gives us three tiers. Gemini 
Pro matches GPT-5 pricing at smaller context but doubles once you go above 200,000 tokens. Flash is designed for speed and multimodality, costing 30 cents input for text images or video and a dollar for audio. Outputs are 250 and that price already includes Google's thinking tokens. Flashlight is the cheapest option in this entire chart. Tencent input for text image or video and just 40 cent output beating even GPT-5 Nano in some of the categories which is quite a welcoming sign. And now let's quickly have a look at this benchmarking information which I understand could be quite subjective. If you look at this, GPT-5 flagship is a clear leader at the moment, consistently ranking number one in every major category, coding, math, reasoning, creativity and multi-turn dialogue. GPT-5 mini comes very close, ranking second across the board which makes it a standout value when you consider its lower price. Gemini 2.5 Pro is also highly competitive, particularly in handling very long context, though it generally sits just below GPT-5. The O3 family, which is slightly receding now, especially, you know, uh, the full and the smaller model. But if you still have some lower level, small logic heavy application, maybe use them for it. Claude Sonnet and Opus remain strong reasoning models, really, really good for coding and creative performance. <clears throat> they are still the leader. On the budget end, GPT-5 Nano and Gemini Flash Lite rank lower in benchmark, but they still hold value in my opinion. So the bottom line is that GPT-5 sets a new benchmark. Dominating across all tasks, GPT-5 Mini and Gemini Pro are the best middle ground choices where they are balancing cost and performance. So that is where I would say the pack is leading, but this could change anytime that is a lay of the land. I also want to introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are iGent. iGent is the world's first multi-agent workforce desktop application, empowering you to build, manage and deploy a custom AI workforce that can turn your most complex workflows into automated tasks. That's it. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel as that helps a lot. And just as a parting word, I know that many of you would be asking what are the pricing and what is a comparison of the Chinese AI labs. So if you are interested in learning which Chinese labs are out there, what they are doing, just go to my channel. And then just yesterday I did this video where I ranked the top Chinese AI labs in 2025, very latest data, which companies are there, which models are there. So if you're interested, just check them out. And by the way, all of these models, not only from China, but also from the West, we have covered very thoroughly hands-on on the channel. So just feel free to search them out. Thank you for all the support.